0212 star 504 hash. Good afternoon. Thank you for keeping it KBC Channel 1. You are in time for the lunchtime news. A very warm welcome to the broadcast. My name is Irene Mchuma Odem. On sign language interpretation this afternoon, we have uh, Brian Muraru. Well, for the better part of the morning hours, uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Health, Susan Akmicha, was taken to task uh, amid the doctor's strike by the legislators at the Senate. This uh, as uh, the Senate is seeking answers on what uh, happened to the extent of uh, the doctor's strike uh, that uh, has paralyzed health facilities in the country. We have details uh, on that and many more. And at this hour, the wage bill conference is underway at the Bombers of Kenya. And this, as the events will be coming to, the, to a close this afternoon, and President William Ruto is officiating the event. And uh, right now, we are crossing over to the bombers of kenya in an event that is also officiated by other cabinet secretaries as well as uh, the src officials who are uh, looking at uh, issues that uh, will benefit uh, the country in various ways it is one of the conference that uh, has been our key of key concern to the country for the previous two days and uh, as uh, it comes to the close uh, today kenyans are looking at the resolutions uh, from uh, the conference and uh, president william ruto will be expected to issue a press conference after the event but right now we cross over and listen in All right, the pictures on your screen are uh, from uh, the Bombers uh, of Kenya and we'll be crossing over live in uh, a bit. Uh, I can see Anwe Guru, the chair for COG, addressing attendance uh, at uh, the Bombers of Kenya. This uh, as uh, the Wedge Bill Conference enters day three and it is today that is coming to a close. We'll be crossing over later in this uh, bulletin. But uh, for now, let's look at other stories making headlines. This afternoon, President William Ruto has ordered relevant state authorities to ensure a reduction of deaths and injuries as a result of road crashes in the country. Speaking during the launch of the National Road Safety Action Plan 2024-2028, the president vowed to eradicate corruption and impunity associated with surge in fatalities in roads across the country. We all know that the largest uh, contributor to road uh, carnage is overspeeding, reckless driving, drunken driving. The numbers have not been coming down. The numbers have been going up. Every year, the numbers are going up. Waziri and your team, the numbers have to come down. Every road user, pedestrian, driver, passenger, private sector, traveling in uh, public uh, transport, our children, all of us must be conscious about the dangers that lack behind road using. And therefore, it is my expectation that we will be the administration that will finally deal with this challenge. 
President Rigathi Gashagwa has appealed to the United Nations agencies in Kenya under the UN Cooperation Framework to speed up the rollout of the UN joint programs as a means of boosting government efforts at achieving the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Gashagwa, who spoke when he hosted a high-level development meeting with UN agencies in Kenya, rallied the agencies to partner with government in addressing human development while at the same time addressing human rights and governance issues. Approximately 24 agencies under the UN attended the meeting with the UN resident coordinator in Kenya, committing that the UN cooperation framework across its lifetime will respond to Kenya's emerging development needs and to the priorities of the government. Let me say that uh, the president anchored this coordination role to this office to give impetus to efficiency and seamless coordination of development partners programs. At this level, the presidency, we have the right gravitas to make sure that things are moving. It becomes much easier to coordinate government and coordinate government reactions and responses and interventions. Our unit for coordination at Ajin is now fully functional. We have a full floor on sixth floor in Harabi House Annex with all the facilities, state of the art, conference rooms, all manner of communication facilities. So when you have something that you think you need government intervention to move a little bit faster, call on sixth floor in Harabi House Annex, you will be well attended. Well, the Wedge Bill Conference enters day three in uh, the county of Nairobi, and we're now crossing over to the Bomas of Kenya. Council of Governors Chair Anne Waiguru is currently speaking. Let's cross over and listen in. We doubt any individuals with fake certificates. Your Excellency, that is the only way to improve our productivity. In conclusion, I would like to share from the quote by Napoleon Hill, which states that the starting point of all achievements is desire. Our desired outcome of this conference is to see the wage bill go down. This is achievable. The current administration has given us the space to thrive. Let us take advantage and prove to all the naysayers that indeed the public service is the cornerstone of service delivery. Therefore, let us take a quantum leap and huge steps to take our country to the next level. As county governments, we commit to implement the resolutions arising from this conference. God bless you and God bless Kenya. Next, Your Excellency, we'll hear from the Cabinet Secretary for Public Service, Performance and Delivery Management, Honorable Moses Kuria, who will in turn invite the Prime Cabinet Secretary when he is done. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Prime Cabinet Secretary, Chair of the Council of Governors, Governors Present, Cabinet Secretaries, Principal Secretaries, and all protocols observed. The Ministry of Public Service is cognizant that uh, the issue of reducing the wage bill from the current 46% of our revenue to that 5%, it is not a nice to have, it's a must to have. It is not an option, it's an imperative. And in this regard, the ministry is also cognizant of the fact that this is not the only issue that we have to deal with to reduce our recurrent expenditure, which continues to frustrate our ambitions. As we open our balance sheet every year, we open with an unrevocable commitment to fund several programs, to fund our free primary uh, program, to fund our free secondary program, to fund our, sub our fertilizer subsidy program, 
to fund our social protection, to fund our counties, to fund our NGCDF. I, I don't know why anybody would want to be the president of this country. Because even before we open the year, we are opening with so many commitments which are unrevocable and which are non-discretionary. So to add to this issue of the wage bill shows that uh, we really are already operating within a very constrained fiscal space and so therefore we must do. And in this regard, uh, my ministry commits on behalf of national government to do four things. One, I'll be shortly moving to cabinet to seek cabinet approval that all establishment, all staff establishment as approved, subject to cabinet approval, will remain suspended until review of the same is done so that we can ask ourselves whether those establishments make sense or not. Secondly, uh, my ministry is going to spearhead a government-wide uh, uh, program on, of uh, looking at our processes, reviewing our processes, asking ourselves which processes are not making sense, asking ourselves which processes can be done using uh, digitization so that as we review our establishment that uh, we are able to uh, have a public service that is fit for purpose. That, Your Excellency, as uh, has been mentioned in the commitment, is to ensure that by December 2024, we migrate everybody from the president to, my, to the smallest person, to the driver within uh, public service to a system of uh, performance management. And that one we will, uh, we will implement. Finally, Your Excellency, is on the issue of training. All public servants must be trained. To have public servants who are not trained is like taking uh, someone from the streets, giving them a gun, recruiting them into the police service uh, without taking them to, to Kikanjo and expecting them to perform. Everyone must be trained so that we can all act in a consistent, coherent manner so as to build our value system within the public service. Thank you, Excellency. Now it is my pleasure to invite uh, <laughs> the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the one on Henry Adukwik, Honorable Musari Mudabad. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Your Excellency, the President, uh, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, my colleagues in Cabinet, the Chair of SRC, distinguished governors, participants. Good afternoon. Um, I had an opportunity to say something when I was there, so I will just limit my remarks so that uh, we can give the President ample time to make a more detailed pronouncement on this issue. But first, let me commend the SRC and all the people who have put this convention together, because indeed it is a very significant gathering that is aimed at shaping and improving our economy. That is absolutely important. The second thing is just to be a little bit maybe philosophical. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know Bomas is famous. Resolutions in Bomas sometimes are bitter, sour, or sweet. But today we are gathered here on a very fundamental issue. And what I want to acknowledge is that we are all resolving that the target of 35% to revenue ratio on the wage bill is significant, it's important, it's a critical target. You are resolving to be part of a team that is now going to be enjoined to Zakayo in quotes so that you can be part of these tough decisions that have got to be made. The President of the Republic of Kenya has been making very tough decisions, extremely tough, because the status of the economy that was inherited by the Kenya Kwanzaa government 
was extremely difficult, and it remains difficult. So difficult decisions have got to be made to deal with debt, to deal with revenue, to deal with security, and so many other things. And what we are addressing here, and the resolve that we shall have in making sure that we can follow through on this, is going to be both bitter, sour, but ultimately sweet for the people of Kenya if we do it right and we do it knowing that we have a target set collectively to improve the well-being of the country. So that is all I can say. Let me not go into any other numbers or details. And it is my honor to request the Deputy President, Rigadi Geshagwa, to come forward and make his remarks and thereafter, thereafter invite His Excellency the President. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, all the distinguished participants, all protocols observed, good afternoon. <clears throat> Your Excellency, this is a very important conference, and in my thinking, I should have been invited on the first day, not the last one, because this must be a very truthful conversation that requires a truthful and honest man. <laughs> but now I'm coming at the tail end, but I'll still speak truthfully. Our Excellency, I've been asked as convener Weibeck to comment, it is true. We do sit with officials from the national government and our governors in that forum called IBEC. And the truth of the matter is that the wage bill among our counties sometimes is between 47% up to 70%, which is contrary to the PFM Act of 2012, that caps at 35%. This situation is not sustainable. And that is the truth. And uh, Your Excellency, most of these people seated here are not very truthful. Despite that they are clapping in these, uh, these resolutions, my own engagement with them tells me differently. In my duty as coordinator of constitutional commissions and independent offices, which you have given me, and it's a great privilege, I receive many complaints and petitions against this, this or that commission. 98% of all the complaints and petitions that I receive are against the chairperson of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission. And most of the people seated here do bring those petitions. Indeed, Your Excellency, to be truthful, you are the only person I have heard you say that the chairperson of the Salaries and Ministry Commission is doing a good job. Everybody else has a problem with her. So let's be honest and let's be truthful and it's the time. This wage bill is not sustainable and those resolutions are very good and I hope you have endorsed them and clapped from the heart. Your Excellency, I cannot sit here and purport to give you advice. Lakini, this issue of fake certificates, I think is a quick win for us. I think it's a quick win, Your Excellency. If we make a decision to get rid of all the fellows and characters with fake certificates, probably we could knock 10,000 people from the wage bill and recover a billion or two. <laughs> <laughs> but Your Excellency, this is not a problem. It requires a decision at your level. And I don't know who will help you. you? Because... <laughs> 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 Your Excellency, 
watu wengi wako kwa serikali wengine magavana wengine heads of department wengine wamekaa huku wengine wamekaa na wewe hapa <laughs> makaratasi yao iko tosari <laughs> so you will have to make a decision <laughs> na sijui nani atakusaidia maybe musalia ataweza because nilimuona ADD pale akisoma hata mimi nilikuwa pale na unajua mimi rais hii maneno ya makaratasi si shughuliki sana naye because mimi sitaki kwenda hiyo barabara ya kwenda river road mimi natosheka na ile kidogo niko naye so when i've been complaining that i'm feeling lonely at the top because my boss has three degrees control of state house has three nani kila mtu mimi niko na kamoja so hii watu ya river road wamekuwa kinitafuta nasema sasa wewe naibu wa rais unalalamika nini tumesaidia watu wengi tumesaidia fulani tumesaidia fulani tumesaidia fulani rais hawa list hiyo nitakupatia ile nimepewa ya wale wamesaidika <laughs> unajua your excellency as you are looking for a running mate and it was uh, looking like it was me and professor kindiki who were in the final shortlist and my supporters were feeling probably i could be disadvantaged because professor kindiki ako pale na mimi niko pale so a lot of my supporters and characters were calling me wanasema tunaweza banga haraka haraka hata kama ni masters utavutiwe ndio ufike pale so your excellency uliponiita kwa interview kuniuliza mambo ya masomo nikakwambia niko na degree moja ukaniuliza hata master huna Naomba rais unikubali tu vile niko nitangangana mbele. Na rais unaona mimi nangangana. The beauty there is no need now to look for this funny certificates. Kuna haja. We have come up with a very good program called recognition of prior learning. If you feel you have skills and competencies that needs to be certified, the mechanism now is there. Kuna haja ya kwenda River Road, Uganda, Ghana, wapi? Kuna haja. So hata mimi kuna haja ya kwenda kuungana na masters. I'll turn up kwa hii watu ya qualifications, niseme nimeunganda hii na hii na hii na ninaona kama nimefika hiyo kiwango. They will assess if they feel nimefika hiyo kiwango na ile kasi nimesaidia rais wanipatie masters without having to go through that. Route. So your excellency this issue of face certificates you have been known in this country now you are on record the hallmark of great leadership is to make difficult hard decisions sometimes unpopular since you came to office you have made some hard decisions that from the look of it were looking very unpopular but today as we speak Kenyans are saying you knew something and you did the right thing. In this matter of wage bill, in this matter of fixed certificates, Your Excellency, I want to encourage you, make hard decisions that will be beneficial to this country. And that will form part of your legacy. With those very many remarks, let me request all of you to be upstanding as we welcome the President of the Republic of Kenya to come and speak and probably pronounce himself on hard and difficult decisions. Mr. President. I am delighted to have the honor of presiding over the closing ceremony of the third National Wage Bill Conference for a number of excellent reasons. The first, of course, is that it is absolutely necessary for government to stay abreast of the public sector wage bill as a component of our recurrent expenditure in the context of our broader 
fiscal agenda. We must always keep in mind that the purpose of government is to attend to the interest and well-being of all citizens by providing essential services and cultivating an environment that fosters economic transformation and inclusive growth. At the same time, we must always remember that economic governance and management are underpinned and necessitated by the inescapable condition that resources are always limited. Our development needs many, and our strategies robust and ambitious. Our commitments will always be defined by the direction of our resource expenditures. And the question always is, are we throwing public resources into a bottomless pit, or are we making sound investments that will anchor growth and create opportunities for many, if not all? This reality is the fundamental question which follows us whenever we concern ourselves with any aspects of public finance management, and which is always answered one way or another by our budgets, whether it is at the national or at the county level. The second reason why this event is important is that the bottom-up economic transformation agenda has invited Kenyans to bravely confront difficult questions, make hard and often painful decisions, and evaluate whether we are serious about rapid growth and inclusive prosperity. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda examined the levels of poverty in our country, the number of people without employment, persistent food and nutrition insecurity, as well as severe vulnerability to climate shifts. The agenda has also prescribed a radical program of ambitious investment in programs and projects with potential to rapidly and sustainably turn the situation around. These investments in the strategic sectors of agro-industrial growth and food security, the micro, small, and medium enterprise, universal health care, affordable housing, and the digital and creative economy require development financing to be available consistently and over a long period. In turn, this imperative has brought home the implications of a national fiscal culture where recurrent expenditure has grown excessively, devouring development expenditure and depriving the country of opportunities to achieve real growth. In fact, this culture reached the point of borrowing expensive debt to finance recurrent expenditure and consumption subsidies. The cost of this trend is very high debt with increasingly risk of distress, low development, unsustainable recurrent budgets, runaway unemployment, poverty, and of course, inequality. Following extensive consultations around the country, we agreed as a people of Kenya that this situation cannot continue. We have to stop living dangerously and beyond our means. We instead need to tighten our belts and make necessary adjustments to make resources available for productive investment. We have seen the fruit of this resolve. As a result of prudent management strategies and bold decisions, we are now far from the cliff of debt distress. Investor confidence is growing in our country. Our currency has reversed its previous calamitous slide against major international currencies. Our import cover has grown to commendable levels, and our general economic outlook is positive. Food production has grown by record margins in successive seasons. Kenyans are receiving health care at home because of our community health promoters program. Young men and women are finding increasing employment opportunities across economic sectors, starting with our affordable housing program, 
and all the digital space. As I talk to you today, we have 140,000 Kenyans working in our affordable housing program that were not working last year. We have 120,000 young people monetizing their digital skills. And many more are in the pipeline as we implement our program. There is no doubt that the implementation of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda has placed the country on the right path. Consequently, I am confident that the consistent execution of this agenda will deliver the goods we blessed or we pledged in our manifesto. The Constitution mandates the government to ensure that public expenditure promotes the equitable resource and development of the country. The Salaries and Remunerations Commission is mandated to continuously monitor the fiscal sustainability of public compensation bill, the ability of the public sector to attract and retain best available skills, recognize productivity and performance, as well as transparently and fairly adjudicate on matters which bill. I know, as uh, my deputy has said, if there is one organization that is not very popular, it is the Salaries and Remunerations Commission. They have a problem with the legislature, they have a problem with the executive, they even have a problem with the judiciary, because everybody expects more pay. I want to encourage our legislature I know they have tried in the past to limit the budget of the SRC as a punishment. I want to encourage them to be more patriotic. If there is one organization that needs support to enable us to make the right decisions, not for themselves, but for the country, it is the Salaries and Remunerations Commission. I want to commit that the government of Kenya will continuously make it possible for SRC to attend to their mandate and to guide the country and to guide entities on matters, salaries and wages so that continuously we can live within our means. The succinct theme of this conference says it all. There is work to be done in ensuring that the public wage bill meets the constitutional threshold. In recognition of this challenge, both levels of government resolve to work in partnership under the aegis of the Intergovernmental Relations Technical Committee in conjunction with SRC and the Council of Governors to set up this conference. As a national government, we have taken the lead with a commitment to reduce our wage bill to 35% of revenue by 2027. I know we've all agreed here on 2028, but I want to encourage us to review that date because it's doable to 2027. As a matter of fact, this very conference was a product of these discussions because we recognize the urgent need for a platform where stakeholders engage on strategies and action plans aimed at achieving this 35% target. Although there is no doubt that government will need to increase employment in critical sectors to enhance service delivery, whether it is in security or in health or in uh, education, the key implications of our deliberation is the need for actions to eliminate duplication of functions and overlaps in roles among ministries, departments, agencies, the national or the county government, and even commission and independent, even commissions and independent offices. Even though our public sector wage bill is, un, is unsustainable, as it stands at 1.1 trillion, it represents only 62% of authorized establishment in the national government, and 100% recruitment would drive the wage bill 
to 1.8 trillion. The composition of the establishment itself is problematic in that it is seriously skewed towards hiring support staff at the expense of technical and other core function staff. Clearly, 83% of state departments have violated the recommended ratio of technical staff to support services. We must change course radically. Therefore, we shall review authorized establishments to design fit for purpose organizational structures for ministries, departments, agencies with optimal staffing levels and achieve fiscal sustainability at the same time. I have issued instructions to the State Department responsible for personnel issues to make sure that that exercise is carried out and concluded before the end of this year. Our agenda is to work with determination to build on two decades of implementation of results-based management with its various tools, including rapid result initiatives, performance contracting, and citizen services delivery frameworks, and deliver an effective, efficient, and transparent public service as a first step to turning Kenya into the hub of public and private sector productivity. A public sector characterized by high efficiency, integrity, accountability, and productivity is vital for the realization of our development aspirations and therefore indispensable for the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. It is also essential for our intentions to make Kenya Africa's productivity champion and the host of the African Productivity Center, which we already have been assigned. To get there, ministries, departments, agencies have to be much more serious about compliance with fundamental integrity, efficiency, and productivity standards. The level of non-compliance with vital constitutional mandates uncovered by the Auditor General and the Public Service Commission in their annual audits is unacceptable and amounts to impunity that can no longer be part of our public service. Just imagine, only 24% of our organizations received an unqualified audit. And the level of compliance with the PCS's audit of compliance with national values is far from pleasing. And nobody is bothered. We're continuing as if it is business as usual. I mean, leaders, heads of ministries, departments, agencies that have qualified uh, accounts one way or another, don't even bother to ask themselves, what are we doing about it? We cannot deliver for Kenyans when we are burdened with impunity. And we must work round the clock to make sure that we walk away from the current status. Let me again repeat, we cannot deliver for the people of Kenya when we are burdened with impunity and wounded by non-compliance. I want to see reports outlining corrective actions in respect of both audits within the next 21 days. And I expect radical improvements in future audits. It cannot be business as usual. If your accounts are qualified, I mean, you cannot just expect that, okay, it is qualified, so, I mean, you must do something about it. And so, I'm expecting a record in the next 25 day, 21 days of, so what? What are you doing about it? It is true that as a public sector, we have an obligation to secure the best skills in the market to service citizens. To do this, the terms of service must be attractive and reasonable enough if they cannot outcompete the private sector. Over time, 
we have made progress in raising the condition of service for all levels of public sector employees. And this fact cannot be denied. In fact, in some instances, the public sector pays better than the private sector. However, this progress was part of a journey which began at the time when public sector compensation was significantly lower than private sector remuneration. The objective was to bring the two categories, public and private, within a reasonable range, not to sustain a practice of perpetual increment. It is a mistake, therefore, for anyone to take the sacrifices Kenyans have made to improve the welfare, working conditions, and compensation of those of us in the public sector as creating an entitlement to automatic en enhancement of remuneration regardless of fiscal sustainability or urgent development needs of citizens. It is a tragedy for highly educated professionals to make unreasonable demands in the face of economic hardships and fiscal constraints and at the expense of legitimate needs of other citizens. We have, ladies and gentlemen, and I repeat this, without any doubt of equivocation, we have to live within our means. It is just as simple as that. We have a duty to dedicate ourselves to a citizen-centric public service paradigm and make our contributions to better in order to extend the benefits of development to reach every citizen. Let us be patriotic servants and diligent professionals. I commend the institutions which have won the Wage Bill Accountability Awards for setting a worthy example for the rest of the public service. They just confirm to us that it is possible. So if anybody doubted, they have demonstrated its visibility. And I congratulate them and I tell them, keep it up. I have carefully listened to the resolutions of the third National Wage Bill Conference as read here by the chairperson of the SRC and I identify myself with the proposed strategic interventions aimed at putting Kenya on the path to a public service wage bill that is sustainable under the towards 35 aspirations set out in the conference theme. Let us collaborate and remain committed to implementation because that is where the test is. We cannot fail if we work together in the spirit of patriotism, partnership, and teamwork. The government of Kenya remains committed, available, and determined to support every institution in implementing these resolutions. We must therefore get to work immediately and remain on the job until it is done. We have, ladies and gentlemen, a unique opportunity to achieve radical and lasting positive change in our country, whose effects will last for generations. This is why we must remain focused at all times, collectively. The third annual Wage Bill Conference, which we have privilege to attend at this moment in our history. And I am confident that the next time we come here, we will be reporting progress. As I have requested, uh, Madam Chair, that the job that we have assigned ourselves, bringing down the wage bill from 46% to revenue to 35% to revenue can be achieved by 2027. There are agencies, parastatals, institutions that have already achieved this without the target we have set. 
they confirm to us that with commitment, with determination, with courage, we can achieve this sooner than even 2027. We need to work collaboratively, we need to work together and see to it that every agency pulls their weight. And as I have said, already the 2,100 identified people who have been earning government wages and salaries with fake certificates so that to Susumbuane they should just refund the money we pay them as salaries and wages so that we, we stop the, the games. Otherwise, ESCC, DCI must move with full speed to recover public resources that were spent on this. Week. Let me also announce here that those who have fake certificates working for government at any level, please surrender and walk away. Because it will not be business as usual as we go into the future. It is impunity of the highest level for any person to walk into a government office knowing very well that they have a fake certificate and actually get a job. I think it is, we have, we spend 65 billion shillings every year on our education, surely. You should be able to take advantage of the 65 billion shillings we spend and get the, six, no, 650 billion Kenya shillings every year we spend on education. You should be able to take advantage of the 650 billion we spend on education and get yourself a proper certificate. I don't think that it's too much to ask, so that at least we can hire. Part of the challenges we have in the public service is because the people who are working there don't have the qualifications they claim to have. And that contributes to the problem that we have. But finally, let me congratulate the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, the Council of Governors, and all that have participated in this conference that we are harmonizing our strategy, we are collaborating, we are working together to make sure that we take our country to the next level. And I am very confident this country is a country of tremendous potential. This country is a great country. This country is a blessed country. We can take Kenya to the next level working together. And I am very confident that it is doable. The third wet bill conference is now officially closed. Asante sana, and God bless you. One more round of applause for His Excellency, please. May I kindly request that we take our seats briefly. Your Excellency, the Wage Bill Accountability um, Conference, or rather the Wage Bill Accountability Awards, uh, to be given to several. So uh, if we can take our seats kindly, briefly. And we have three awards to be given out. And they are in the following. The, this is what they have um, achieved so far. The wage bill for these institutions has not been more than 35% ratio of revenue for three years consecutively. They have also demonstrated... All right, the pictures on your screen are coming live from the Bombers of Kenya. This marks the close of the three-day wage bill conference, which has been officiated by President William Ruto. President William Ruto putting on sports individuals who work in government offices with fake certificates say it's about time they walk out. The president also says that uh, the country is able to achieve uh, to bring down the wedge bill from 46% in revenue to 35% in revenue by 2027. At the same time, the president says the country's agenda is to push for a transparent public service, and he's also keen on ensuring that productivity and accountability are aspects that push the country forward towards the right direction.
Well, we have a whole team on the ground. Give us some minor. My colleague will be giving you the resolutions in our subsequent bulletins. But for now, other news making headlines this afternoon. Nandi Senator Samson Chirarge has raised concerns over the safety of Bunge Towers ahead of its launch later this week. The senator claims a section of legislators are of the view that they cannot occupy the building due to the risk it poses pending its completion. The legislator has requested the completion certificate, certificate of occupation and certification by public health be provided before the legislators occupy the 9.6 billion shillings tower. Bunge Towers will be launched this Friday. <laughs> They are doing it at their own risk. Because I couldn't see this chat. Now, this chat is coming as it is. If you are going to make a mistake, you will be punished. Because I have been told that if I let you, it is necessary to make a mistake. If you are going to make a mistake, you will be punished. Because I have been told that if I let you, it is necessary to make a mistake. If you are going to make a mistake, Ziko offices za ambazo ni KICC zimekodishwa siku ofisi katika bunge wale haitakane kuwa kuna wabunge wanataka kupoteza marugurupu hawana hata hizo ofisi hazitoshi bunge kwa sababu wabunge ni 350 eh, bunge la seneti ni 67 izile ofisi ambazo zimepatikana hapo kama bunge la senate limepewa karibu 50 na kitu so kwanza hilo jengo alitoshelezi mahitaji ya ofisi hata secretary yetu ataendelea kufanya kazi katika corridors kwa sababu the, the demand is still very high The National Assembly is mulling over amending the Sexual Offences Act 2023 to criminalize seeking favor through sex amid what they say are rising cases of sexual extortions for jobs and opportunities in the country. The petition before the Public Petitions Committee received the backing of a majority of legislators. They are proposing to have those proved to have committed the offence resigned to restore confidence in public offices. Additionally, members of parliament also, once Nairobi County Assembly Speaker Kennedy Ngondi, investigated for alleged sexual harassment. Ngondi is claimed to have forcefully hugged an MCA at the Nairobi County Assembly against her will. The National Assembly, through the Public Petitions Committee, one, propose amendments to the Penal Code, Sexual Offences Act, and other relevant criminal laws to explicitly define sextortion as an offence, make clear provisions on penalties, support for victims, and for connected purposes. I've met many, people, many other women who wanted to, who actually went through interviews successfully, but before they could be given employment letters, their bosses wanted to have sex with them. So, Madam Speaker, this issue is really very serious. And I wish this parliament would take this matter very seriously and ensure that sextology uh, law is enacted here so that we can protect women uh, who are being exploited uh, 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 by uh, sex, these sex perverts. Well, Speaker, when you hear situations such like um like the, the issue that is happening in Kibra about uh, exchanging sex for water, that is an issue that actually needs to be taken into serious consideration because it might take us a long time to have these laws in place because of the procedures we have in Parliament, but we also just need to identify the key areas that are really being affected by this. This should be criminalized and uh, we should be able to make it an offence for somebody to ask for sex. And I think it is demeaning even to our women when somebody looks at you and asks for sex to be able to provide you with a certain service or a certain favor. It's not just a petition. It is for us to bring in the amendments first in the penal code, but it has to go in all the acts once and for all so that we stop this thing that I must give sex favors to a man to listen to me, to give me a nomination, to make me who I am. We say no to that, Madam Speaker. 
Matatu Owners Association is calling on the government to ensure the price of fuel stabilizes while welcoming the current decrease of fuel prices in the last two months. The association's president, Albert Karakacha, said they have forged partnerships with stakeholders in the sector to help curb increased road accidents in the country. They have also called for a reduction of spare parts prices. We've been doing clinics the whole country as Matatuana Association. And uh, through the, the road clinics, we believe the road uh, carnage is going to go down. And uh, we urge our drivers to be very careful on our roads, to make sure that they don't carry excess, to make sure they don't drink while they are driving. We still plead with the government to work more to ensure that the price is stabilized, the spare parts prices come down, and the, and, and, and the Kenya shillings become stronger so that you can be able to even pay your loans in good time and get sufficient profits. Residents of Lopideng in Lokichogyo, Turkana County, want the government to construct a bridge across the Nam River to ease accessibility. The residents say when it rains, they are unable to access services, especially at Lopideng Subcounty Hospital. Health workers at the facility also decried challenges they face when committing to work with some forced to remove their shoes and wade through the muddy waters to avoid missing work. Nanam River in Lokichogyo, Turukana County. About 10 minutes of heavy downpour and the road becomes impassable. Some of the residents, including children, up to cross nevertheless despite danger staring at them. The elderly too are not spared as others opt to cross in the indigenous way to ensure they keep their balance, perhaps in recognition there is safety in mind. <laughs> Among those stranded here is Geoffrey Ebe and Samuel Nama, who are health workers at Lopiding Sub County Hospital. <laughs> So the main problem affecting us as we speak now, the Mambuai River, at other times in our flow, so we cannot cross, cross it. So we are requesting at least the government to work a bridge. It's a very short distance, so the government to work a two bridge, it will be very easy, at least to go to a part of Uduma. They have to get to work and test the water levels to determine the depth before taking the risk to wade through the murky waters. The community is now expressing fears of waterborne diseases and their safety as they cross through the waters calling on government to urgently intervene and make the roads passable. Wakati na teriamuwa, wale wagonji ambayo inatoka saidi songot, lokichokyo, lotelait, inakosa uduma. We accident bridge. So wakati bridge. Now, this is a situation that the communities here are subjected to whenever it rains. The communities are now calling on the government to intervene to make the area more accessible. Nancy Okware reporting from Lopiding, Turukana County. A section of Northeastern Kenya Primary School Head Teachers Association want the government to improve the security situation for ease of learning in schools across the region. This recommendation follows the perennial problem of teacher shortage attributed to some non-local teachers fleeing for safety due to insecurity. In the challenges in the education sector, no, the Eastern Capture members lamented that many schools were being run only by the school head and those employed by Board of Governor, urging the Teacher Service Commission to increase the number of teachers in the region. There are a lot of challenges actually in the, we are facing as a Capture or our head teachers of this a great country and uh, specifically on northeastern one main challenge is the issue of staffing and uh, that's what we want the government to address you realize that there are some schools that have only one 
teacher, a head teacher only, with about uh, eight classrooms. Pidhara ina usika ya kishi kwamba katika mtaala ambao wana walimu wanao hitimu, wa hitimu kwamba ni walimu atakwa ukuja kutusaidia, si walimu ambao pia itakuwa ni, ni mzigo kwetu. They further said that despite their numerous pleas, nothing has been forthcoming, making operations of school completely difficult. Pauline Nassimil for Lunchtime News. Police in Atimba village, Igembe, South Meru County, led by Mawa OCS, John Amanda, have destroyed over 6,000 liters of illicit brew in the area. Amanda issued a warning to the illicit brewers to stop the trade or move out of the area. He called upon the members of the public to share any information regarding people who are conducting such businesses to ease the work of the law enforcers. Changanyo na pampas za watoto, ambazo zikiingizo kwa hiyo pombe, ukikunywa hiyo pombe, huwezi kwa sakurudi hapa. So hii ndio ina, imeongeza uongezeko la pombe ya ramu hapa. Hii pombe inaribu hata watoto, watu hawasomi. Kwa sababu watoto wakikunywa hii pombe hawaendi shule. Napika hii pombe chuma chao kiko motoni na hatoto wapatia hiyo nafasi ya kueneza pombe ya ramu katika hii area. Seven members of a family in Molo who lost their lives in a tragic road accident have been laid to rest. That concerns over increased road carnage took center stage during the burial with stakeholders in the transport sector calling for drastic measures to tame the road carnage menace. Nakuru Governor Susan Kihika, who attended the burial, pledged to help support the children of the bereaved. <laughs> A somber mood engulfed Nyota village in Kuresoi North, Nakuru County, as a family of seven who died in a tragic road accident along Mombasa Road were laid to rest. It's hard to accept the death of a loved one, especially when you didn't have the chance to say goodbye. In the tapestry of life, Esther Wanjiro Macharia, my cherished daughter, was a radiant thread. Hey Dad, we honor you and we honor your life you have lived in. I wish we had just one more chance to see your tender smile to laugh. The fatal accident that claimed the lives of a 61-year-old man, his sister-in-law and their five grandchildren involved a collision between a 14-seater Matatu and a trailer in Salama along a Nairobi-Mombasa highway. Nakuru Governor Susan Kehika and Water, Sanitation and Irrigation Cabinet Secretary Zakari Njeru joined the mourners in castigating the increased road accidents as Kehika promised to support the children of the bereaved. I know I have to go through the County Public Service Board, but I want to promise you that at least two children, we shall, if nothing else, to chukwe tuwa toto wavili, ili tuweze kusaidia familia kiboko. Kwa jukumu hiyo, tunafanya kazi inavyo takikana, ili wakati utapumzika. Wale ambao wataongea, wakati wewe hausiki, wataongea nini kukuhusu wewe. Sentiments were echoed by other stakeholders in the transport sector who also opposed a move by the transport CS Kipchumba Murkomen to replace speed limiters with cameras and telemetric gadgets as a solution. Kenya tunagari uh, 1 million, 1.5 million ambazo zinastahili kwenda inspection. Kwa hivyo tuko na gari 1.2 million ambazo zinaweza uwa watu any time kwa barabara zetu. When you talk of uh, new systems it is still you are saying that what kills the people on the road is speed. It is a matter of concern. Clerics in the region have, however, sought a divine intervention over the increased road accidents. Kaweze kuwambea taifa hili letu. Kwa sababu tumerewa ya kwamba, watu wetu wanatolewa kama dhabiu kwa sababu spiritually kuna murango umefunguka. Sarafina Robi for Lunchtime News. Gravel and business traders with stalls along the Mombasa Nairobi Highway in Mlolongo at the river and Sokimau areas have been given a seven-day notice to vacate or face forceful eviction. According to the Kenya National Highways Authority engineer Eunice Kiambi, the said traders are violating road safety laws by placing gravel sheds on areas reserved for road expansion and by doing so they are also endangering their lives and that of motorists.
The major reason why we are removing you from the road is for your safety. So that you mufanye biashara na mutu arudi kwa familia yake zioni akiwa salama. Pili, mumeona vile kukinyesha barabara inakuwa majitupu. Sababu wengine wenu wameenda wamejenga kiosks on top of the drain. Sasa hata uwe contractor tukonaye, hawezi fika pale, haende akasafishe drain. Drain iki block, barabara iki flood, hata nyinyi, you cannot move from your shop to your home. Because the road is like a river. The Kenya National Union of Teachers has urged the national government to promptly deal with rising insecurity cases in bandit-prone areas. The union's vice chair, Malel Langat, says the escalating security situation has made several learners insti learning institutions to close shop, especially in Samburu, Baringo, West Pokot, El Gil Marraquet, and parts of Narok County. The union is now worried that the learners may not perform well in the national examinations and want the government to address the issue. Children are preparing for national assessment and examinations. And if schools are closed, then it means in those regions, in those sub-counties, in those counties, they will not benefit as Kenyans. We are killing the next generation. So the government must do something. The government has been promising. The students in Kembo County have received bursaries to enroll in vocational training centers within the county. Speaking during the issuance of the bursaries, the area governor Kimani Wamatangi said the increase in allocation to the fund will enhance the number of beneficiaries and enhance the amount allocated to each student. His sentiments were echoed by his deputy, Rosemary Kirika, who urged all stakeholders to join hands and ensure needy students are enrolled in schools and in vocational training centers to access education. 2024, Basare tumeongeza tena kutoka ile 300 million, sasa tunapeana 500 million kwa umuaka. I would like to encourage all our people, all our citizens of Kiambu County. If you can afford, please let us all uh, endeavor to support and to enable our struggling neighbors. Thank you for keeping it, KBC Channel One. Time for business. There is need to support innovation and indigenous inventions for scalability and sustainability in the ICT sector in the country. Communications Authority of Kenya Director General David Mugonyi says a collaborative approach instead of competition between the public and private sector is key to drive the growth of the ICT sector. The ICT sector has seen a surge in adoption, innovation and investment with its growth rate outpacing other industries by up to 2.5 times. We now need to start seriously thinking about how we can be able to support the innovations that are coming out of Kenya and homegrown solutions. To recognize excellence and innovation, the Communications Authority of Kenya has introduced a new category in the Kuz Awards to honor licensees who excel in technological advancements and digital inclusivity. After careful reflection and invaluable feedback from the industry, we realized we could add more value to the two events by merging them and expanding the awards to incorporate the fullness of the ICT sector. The award shall now be called the Kuza ICT Award. The objectives of the ICT, announced ICT Awards, is to ensure that uh, there is inclusivity in the ICT sector, and we also want to ensure that we announce the impact of the ICT Week and uh, Kuza Awards. Basically, the bigger, uh, more inclusive uh, ICT will have better ICT Awards will have better impact in the in the sector. The Kuza ICT Awards is expected to provide a platform for showcasing the latest innovations and creativity in embracing new technologies in the digital space. Under this new arrangement, the ICT Week 24 will culminate with the first edition of the Kuza ICT Awards. 
This expansion broadens the scope of the awards to recognize excellence across various regulated services in the ICT industry. For a month, starting from Monday next week, the public will have the opportunity to cast votes for their favorite nominees in broadcast, cybersecurity and telecommunications. Trevor Nindo for Lunchtime News. That's like the icing on the cake. The cost of insurance is likely to go up if Parliament adopts a proposal to effect a 16% VAT on insurance services. This is according to Ernst and Young, is contained in the medium term revenue strategy for the financial years 2023, 2024 to 2026, 2027. Ernst and Young is also proposing introduction of cluster taxation in the agricultural value chain to bring more into the tax bracket instead of the proposed 5% withholding tax on agricultural products delivered to organizations like cooperatives. It can really increase everybody's life by 16%, especially education. And that's what I'm trying to say. Then, one of the things which will happen uh, is that uh, you're increasing a portion of a very essential commodity by 16%. Number two, you'll also have insurance premiums for those in the insurance sector. And if you're paying, if you usually pay 10k, now somebody is telling you to increase the same to 11,600 or something like that. So I'm like, it will be quite high uh, for that particular sector. Look at the penetration rate for insurance in Kenya. It's, uh, it's not high up there. It's something that, that really uh, in the nascent stage. So the question is, do you really want now that the 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 particular section? I mean, a uh, sector that you are also on the other hand saying that you want to promote. Um, as far as VAT goes, that becomes a burden to this particular person. Remember, they can't deduct it, they can't blame it, maybe they're not even registered for VAT for starters. Homer Bay County is uh, calling on investors to tap immense tourism opportunities in the areas such as the endangered and rare ruined antelope to put up an ecology in the Ruma National Park. Homer Bay County Executive Committee member for tourism, Polycap Okombo, says putting up hospitality facilities at the park will not only attract more tourists but also create jobs for residents. We are gearing up to raise funds to conserve the environment and also conserve the Rhone antelope, hence the name Rhone Half Marathon. The KWS, since they are now gaining out of this, are also doing some great within the communities around the Rhone National Park. They have plans to pipe water to the community and also develop and improve the schools around the, the park. Across the borders in the world of business, United Airlines has blamed Boeing for a $200 million kit to its earnings in the first three months of this year. The carrier was forced to ground its Boeing 737 MAX 9 fleet for three weeks after a mid-air cabin blowout on an Alaska Airlines flight in January. United Airlines said that pushed it to a pretext loss of $164 million for the first quarter. Here now are the details of this and other stories. United has 79 Boeing 737 MAX 9S in its fleet, more than any of its rivals, and second only to Alaska Airlines. United and Alaska were forced to cancel thousands of flights as inspections were carried out in January before the U.S. aviation regulator cleared the plane's tourism flying. United told investors that its operations were also impacted by delays to deliveries of Boeing planes. United slashed its total aircraft delivery estimates for this year to 66 from 88 expected in February, citing Boeing's ongoing safety crisis. Meanwhile, Germany company Covestro, one of the world's leading polymer manufacturers, is contributing to China's green transformation drive and is committed to furthering the country's effort in achieving carbon neutrality by the year 2060. 
In 2023, Covestro's turnover in China stood at 3.1 billion euros and its cumulative investment exceeded 4 billion euros. As the largest chemical market in the world, China boasts great value chains and huge future potentials for green development and Covestro is now focusing on achieving dual carbon goals. Finally, the approval rating of the cabinet led by Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is hovering at a low level as the fundraising scandal within the largest faction continues to ferment, with the ratings seeing a slight increase of 3.7 percentage points to 23.8 percent. In the five years since 2018, the Abe faction, once led by former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, had failed to report a total of $4.37 million. Japan's economy is being tested, with the prices rising at home and many people in the country dissatisfied with the government's ability to deal with economic problems. Apart from the arising problems in the economy that have not yet been properly addressed, Japan's defense budget, which has risen year by year, will also translate into tax pressure on the Japanese people. The group Bunge La Monainche is uh, now... All right, uh, I beg your pardon. Let's take uh, that uh, news item again. A lobby group, Bunge Lamonainche, is now calling for the National Hospital Insurance Fund Chief Executive Officer Elijah Washira to resign for ignoring court orders. The group claims the NHIF board has uh, disregarded Lady Justice Wambua Mungare orders dated 6th February 2024 that ordered the NHIF board to pay Jomek Limited, a rehabilitation centre, hospital in Nakuru, an all-inclusive sum amounting to 188.2 million shillings in full and final settlement of the matter be payable in one instalment or on before 9th February 2024. <laughs> Indeed, the current CEO of NHIF, Mr. Elijah Washira, has lost the moral authority to continue being at the helm of the NHIF due to openly disregarding court orders and violating Articles 10, 73 and 232 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. His conduct of running the affairs of NHIF has of late been questionable and wanting. We are giving Mr. Washira seven days. Within seven days, if you won't have been implemented, anything that the court has said, and we shall articulate Article 1. We shall come to NHIF building and we shall do citizen arrest. The court order is very clear. Na Sharia in Asema, if anyone breaches the law you shall be committed to a civil jail for a term not exceeding six months we are a democracy and we believe that democracy is for the the rule for the people and the people are demanding that mr washira should be outside the office as we are speaking right now because the law is for the people to all public officers who disregard or show contempt for court orders. We have sufficient evidence to support allegations that Mr. Washira is engaged in a number of fraudulent acts and criminal activities within that particular institution, and we will ensure that we firmly prosecute this matter to ensure that he is held accountable for those particular misconducts. In sports, two-time Olympic champion and double 1,500 meters world champion Faith Kipiagon will take part in the 1,500 meters race at the Xiamen Diamond League in China this weekend. Kipiagon will line up alongside 10,000 meters specialist Ethiopia's Gudaf Segai. Kipiagon, a two-time Olympic champion and a double world champion, has not been beaten in 1,500 meters since 2021, but he faces a stunt test over her specialist distance in Xiamen. The Kenyan will take on 10 women who have run below four minutes, including Gudaf Sigai of Ethiopia. Also in the lineup are several formidable Ethiopians, including Diribe Teji, last year's world 1,500 meters silver medalist and the reigning world road mile champion, alongside Freweni Hailu, who 
recently won the World Indoor 1500 meters title in Glasgow. World champion Sharika Richardson of USA, Laulaga Tausaga and Chase Jackson will also compete in China. For London News, I'm Sila Onyango. Never a world record here in Florence for the greatest fifth. And on that sporting note, we have come to the end of Channel One Lunch Team News. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your feedback on our social media platforms. For more details on ad items and many more, do log on to www.kbc.co.ke. My name is Irene Chimo Dave. My co-anchor for language interpretation is.